Welcome to Kingdom Mandate with Apostle Sidney Quay, head pastor of Shekinah Avenue. Now, let's listen to today's message. We wait for you. You want to turn your Bibles quickly? I want to read from the TBT, the Passion Translation. I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, verses number 14 through to 17. Isn't God good? If I ask you what is spiritual warfare, what would you say? Somebody will say the believer's responsibility of battling devils, demons, spirits, in as much as that is true, that is not entirely true. Second Corinthians 1, 14 to 17, the Passion Bible, it says, We know you have already understood us in a measure. And that you will eventually come to understand us fully. Then you will be able to boast of us. Even as we will boast of you. In the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 15. It says, Now thanks be unto God. Which always causes us to triumph. Where? In Christ. And make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God. God always makes his grace visible in Christ, who includes us as partners of his endless triumph. Through our yielded lives, he spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere we go. We have become the unmistakable aroma of the victory of the anointed one to God. A perfume of life to those being saved and an odor of death to those who are perishing. The unbelievers smell a deadly stench that leads to death. But believers smell The life-giving aroma that leads to abundant life. And who of us can rise to this challenge? Pay attention. I will seek to explain some things like I have told you as an apostle of God. If you want to please me, you will not go anywhere. You must speak the word, the truth. So Paul was saying that they spoke the truth sincerely and honestly not like those who corrupted and mishandled the word of God now spiritual warfare warfare means a conflict a contention we call it warfare when this warfare conflict contention is in the spirit we call it spiritual Warfare. That means that the contention is in the place called the spirit. Secondly, when this contention or conflict is between spirits, we call it spiritual warfare also. I hope you are getting it. If the warfare or conflict is in the spirit, it's in the spiritual realm, we call it spiritual warfare. That means that it's not men who are just fighting or nations who are just fighting but this fight is in the spirit so it's not natural not in us not in ghana location doesn't matter it's in the spirit and we are saying that when it also involves spirits then it is spiritual warfare and thirdly when the conflict relates to your spirit we call it spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is not a believer fighting devils. No. Our warfare 
is referred to as a battle, a fight, a struggle. Even the Bible says that it's a good fight of faith. Most people's frustration, most people's challenges, a lot of Christians are frustrated because of the wrong concepts in spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is when a believer enforces the victory that Christ won in every sphere of their life. It is spiritual warfare. It is not battling with things. It is enforcing the victory that Jesus Christ won on Calvary. And the victory that was handed over to him when he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. When the believer enforces this victory over his body, over his soul, and over his spirit, and over his environment, we call this process a spiritual warfare. Every man that is born, whether believer or unbeliever, has an enemy. Our enemy automatically is the devil. The devil fights against the image of God, which man is. So he will fight against anything at all. This is why it gets interesting. Every man that is not born again is a tool for the devil. Every unbeliever you see around, he is a weapon in the hands of the devil. Once they don't know Christ, they are tools and weapons of the devil. This is why evangelism and preaching of the gospel is of greater priority than praying and not preaching. Now, the church has taught and we have taken all the conflicts. We see it as deeply rooted in the spirit. Whereby you need to get somewhere to do the warfare. We have brought so many things into the conflict. Rather than enforcing the victory, we are busily looking to fight and win our own battle, which is pride, self-centeredness, and ignorance. Many believers, they are taught that we are not ignorant of what? The devices of what? Of the devil. And many go on a hunt to know what the devices of the devil are. But that Bible text is simply saying, we will not allow unforgiveness to trap us. Because that was what Paul was talking about. That the device which they were not ignorant of is not devil's flying. No. It is the church holding somebody's sin against him. The person did wrong, he was rebuked and corrected, and they were still holding it against the guy. And Paul said, No, don't do that. When you do that, you are ignorant of the devices of the devil, but we are not, so we won't do that. We have put warfare into timelines and time zones as much as it is good, and excess of it is deadly. Whereby believers still praying at 12, 3, 2 is more effective than praying maybe within the day. But you see, because you don't think far, you are programmed to think prayers are more effective at dawn. You see, when you reduce prayer to this, you have begun already losing the battle. Pay attention. Because the battle has nothing to do with timeline. It has got nothing to do with days, no festivities. It has got to do with Jesus and his victory. And how you learn to enforce it. A lot of believers have not learned it. They are dying. They are sick. They are depressed. They are frustrated. Actually, it is said that the most frustrated of people are believers. Cannot believers. They watch everything. They see everything. They experience everything that they shouldn't. Because they have not understood the dimensions of the warfare and how to go about it. That God has not given them a battle to go and fight with the devil. He has given them victory. So the Bible says, Thanks be unto God, who always causes us to what? To triumph in Christ Jesus. God's expectation is that you will triumph in Christ always, not sometimes. No, you are down today, you are up tomorrow. That is not the will of God. His will in the warfare is that you will be able to extend his victory endlessly. Spiritual warfare is dependent on action, inaction, and reaction. 
I'm going to give you three scenarios. Abraham, let me quote it. Genesis 14, 14. You'll find the entire story in Genesis chapter 14 and chapter 15. But let me quote Genesis 14, 14. 13 said that when Abraham had heard, and there came one that had escaped and told Abraham the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Esco and brother of Anna. And these were confederate with Abraham. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, what did he do? He armed his strained servants, born in his world, in his own house, 300 and what? And 18, and pursued them. This is the man's first reaction when he heard that not had been captured. You know, he should not even if it had been some of us. You know, we have preached messages around the fact that Lot was asked to choose the land is before him, he should choose. And he chose what? The best, the best portion. And because he chose the, the best portion, people say that he should have listened to the father and not chosen the best portion and giving him the first right of choice. And it would have been well with him. You see, we try to extend the word of God into all kinds of things that is not necessary. Abraham had no problem with him. The Bible even said that actually it was not a problem between him and Lot. Actually it was their headsman. And he sent him away. And he heard that he had been captured. The man's first response. He took 318 men trained to go and fight. When you start reading Genesis chapter 14. The credentials of the king. That defeated Sodom and Gomorrah is laid out. That he was the king that looked and watched over all the region. And they had rebelled after 12 years into the 13th year. So the 14th year, he, he brought four more kings. So there were five and they came against four kings. Then the Bible states, he didn't start with Sodom and Gomorrah, no. He went to all the countries of the Amalekites. He went into the mountains of Israel. And he met giants, giants. Giants, the Rephims, the Imims, the Sumims. He met these giants. And he defeated the giants. After defeating the giants, he progressed to Sodom and Gomorrah. This is the capacity of the man. But when Abraham heard, he did not consider his capacity. He did not consider his armory. He did not even consider their numbers. He had defeated 14 kings. 14 nations. Abraham did not consider. He took just 318 men to go after a man that has slaughtered giants. A man that has silenced, I am saying as a reference, children believe to be products of angels. The giant hierarchy that Goliath and Co came from. Og and Basham and all those, that's where they came. He had defeated 14 Abraham. Just went out to fight him. What did he do? How many believers will have this composure? In the face of trial, I read another one for you because I said spiritual warfare is all about actions, reactions, and inactions. The Bible said Elisha went to Shunam and passed in Shunam always, and there was a woman there. This is Second Kings four. There was a woman there, and this woman saw that Elisha was a holy man of God. So the woman built a space, a room for him at the top provided a table a lamp, a chair and a bed for Elijah and Elijah got there stayed there, prayed a bit then Elijah had to ask, he said what do this, this what does she need should we talk to the king for her the woman said no, I mean, I mean I dwell in the midst of my own people so nobody talks to my king for me I'm okay then Gehazi said he doesn't have a child then Elijah prophesied the woman said don't deceive me oh man of God all that the Bible said in the course of time, the child grew. When the child grew, he went to the farm, saying, my head, my head. The father sent him to the mother, and the Bible said he died on the lap of the mother. What will you do in front of death? Cry? No. The Bible said the woman carried the baby, climbed the top, opened the man of God's room, placed the boy 
on the bed, locked the door, shut it. Called out to the husband who was in the field. He said, I need a donkey and a fast rider. The man said, oh, what is happening? Are you okay? She said, it is all well. How do you react? He said, it is all well. She took off. Then told the rider, he said that, as we are going, don't slow. Ride at full top speed until I tell you to stop. They rode. How they found out where the man of God was, I don't even know. Because the prophets of those days were scarce. But she found out where Elijah was. When she got there, Elijah said, Okay, that's it. That is the Shunammite woman. Ask her if everything is fine. Is it fine with you, Shunammite woman? She said, Yes. Is your son fine? Yes. Is your husband fine? Yes. How will you react? Teaching you spiritual warfare. It is well. In the Hebrew, it's shalom. Peace. That it is well. It is sound. She draws nigh. Help the man of God. The man of God said, Oh, you were in bitterness like this. And God didn't show it to me. Gehazi, take my staff. Run into the city. When you get there, don't listen, don't greet, don't greet anyone, don't respond to any greetings. Lay hands on the child, put the staff on, the, and the child will come back to life. And the woman still stayed with Elijah. Stayed with Elijah. Then he said, Man of God, as long as my soul lives, and your soul lives, I will not leave you. This is the exact word Elijah used to take mantle and grace from Elijah. As long as my soul lives, I will not leave you. When Elijah heard that, follow the woman. Go to the house, raise the child. The importance is the response. You see, we have complicated spiritual warfare. Paul said, I fear. Lest like the serpent deceive Eve. He may deceive you. Then he put an interesting word there. I thought it would say spirit. He said, to corrupt your mind. That's why I started with renewal of the mind. Renewal of the mind is metamorpho. It means metamorphosis. It means that when a caterpillar, that's the closest, transform into a butterfly. Now, this is where the revelation touches ground. There are some transformation when you have. It can be altered. When the caterpillar transforms into a butterfly, there is no way again it can become a caterpillar again. This is the essence of the renewal of a man's mind. When a man's mind is renewed, bam. And the spirit of his mind is renewed, bam. There is a transformation that he cannot alter again. That is the truth. He will not crawl again. He will not chew grass or leaves again. He will feed on nectar. He will fly. He will feed not on bola. He will rather go and feed on what? On nectar. That is a, trans a complete transformation. And this is what awaits you. When you renew your mind. And I'm taking you on a journey. Your victory is not enforced by using salt. Put it in the back of your mind. It is not enforced by using incantations or spells. No. It is not enforced by any of these things. Water, river water. These things are prophetic elements. They are sometimes useful. But when you make it a channel for your warfare. Let me give you information. Without Christ, any spiritual man knows garlic. Devils don't like it. Every spiritual man knows onions. Onions, there are salts, there are mixtures. When do you even do naturally? Spirits are far away. That is not my essence. That is demonic wisdom. So I'm not interested there. We have complicated this whole thing. Made it very complicated. People are chasing after something they will never arrive at. If you don't accept the victory of Christ on the cross, you will fight and never win any day. I can tell you comfortably. That is why it is important. You hold dear, dear, dear the victory of the Christ and you enforce it. Not going out to go and look at the levels of devils. Look at levels of devils. Sometimes it is sad. Very sad. Very sad. People cheaping the victory of Christ because they are not taught that that is where we start our warfare from from the place of victory we are not in battles with devils to win them. no we are in battle to let them know their place the bible teaches is that through the church God will teach principalities and powers the many sided wisdom of God how he can take clay and silence their work how he can take clay and silence their oppression how he can take a man as young as 17 years
fears and turn the whole nation around God will teach them sense there are seven principles in spiritual warfare seven as your pastor today I'll take time and teach seven principles I will enlarge the last principle to accommodate all this is the way Paul starts it he says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might not your strength it tells you all I've been telling you I want you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might you are strong in Lord I like the way the message says he said I God I am strong so be strong let it that is where we start from we don't start as weaklings we don't start as beggars we don't start as servants we start as sons who are anointed by God if God be for us oh I can't hear you if God be for you if God be for you what is in you is what greater than what is where you are starting from the place of victory authority strength be strong in the Lord not in yourself in the Lord he said if any man boast let him boast in the Lord your first principle or activity is spiritual warfare I have seen people you know the books I've read how many of you read this you read, you read this book uh, oh God grandmaster now in Christ you have read it before then we have Emmanuel Emim's deliverance from the powers of darkness take your time go back pick the book and read it again because the foundation of all that is not the word the foundation of all that is a man's experience he says though we walk in the flesh we do not walk after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare they are not what they are not canal but they are what mighty well through Christ to what pulling down what strongholds and what and casting down every what imagination this is your first responsibility cast down imaginations you must learn it I am teaching you practical spiritual warfare you must learn to begin to cast down imaginations thank God he didn't say voices he said imaginations he said cast it down demolish it pull it down destroy it imaginations thoughts things that give you pictures he said drop them down cast them down whether it is a dream it forms imagination a vision imagination once it doesn't agree with the word of God your responsibility is to what cast it down they say you shall die you cast it down why you say the Lord shall satisfy me with long life they said that your boss will worry you is troublesome you declare if God is my helper what can man do to me you see you are casting it down you must take a hold of the thoughts and cast it down nobody will do it for you first spiritual responsibility casting things down you see a picture you have a dream I dreamt I saw myself in uniform in my old school in Willibur Secondary in SS2 I see myself I get up I said it's retrogression who taught you that is that the reality is your dream the reality or the word of God what does the word of God say the longer you live the brighter you become that is where reality is the other one is not reality it does whether it's prophecy if it does not align with God's word you take it you cast it down if it's a dream it doesn't agree with the word of God you take it cast it down if you don't do this seeds will be sown in your mind that will destroy you this is how we started when you get into Christ you learn to cast things down cast it down it's a bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ you look at life you look at your family anything that gives you an image you look at your sister you look at your brother that it paints an image you take it you cast it down look at someone and say, do you have some things to take I have some things to take you look at the country you look at where we are going you look at businesses then you are getting afraid no you take it if it's an image you take it 
you cast it down. Spiritual warfare. Number one. A lot of Christians will not take it captive nor cast. They will take the thought. How do you take thought? By saying, It's began saying it. And once he began saying, Jesus said, That is the way you take thought. It does not matter what you see, what you hear, what it looks like. Paul said, Though our outward man perisheth, our inward man is renewed day by day. We do not look at things which are seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. I said, You take it and you what? You cast it down. You dream you are dead in a casket. You don't rise and you are you are panicking. You rise and you tell yourself, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou art, thou art, thou anointest my head with oil. My God over surely shall follow me all the days of my life you don't talk about the dream you talk about the word you are casting down imaginations you bring it down you look at the pictures your business doesn't look bleak it looks bleak you don't talk it you cast it down I declare what sort of my hands are touched Jesus. shall be blessed Amen. my work is blessed you are casting imaginations they tell you you have cancer what is the next thing if you go thinking about it you will die. You take it. The number of my days I shall fulfill. Casting it down. This is where it starts. This is where it starts. What you will enjoy in the physical and what you will enjoy in the spiritual is a function of what your soul accepts. That's why you must begin to meditate. You cast it down. When there are arguments, you cast it down. 400 years in this family. Nobody has done this. Those are arguments. Those are high things. You cast it down. You cast it down. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Nothing like bloodline for me. My bloodline is the bloodline of Christ. Cast it down. You cast it down. We cast it down. Listen, you don't need to have resources before you finish an assignment. God is your resource. If God is your resource, there is nothing at all that he will not supply. You renew your mind. If anything rises in your mind, it is not able. You tell him, no. No. And no. My God, he shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Even in Christ Jesus. You declare it. What? You are casting it. What? What are you doing? One. You learn casting out, not casting down. You learn casting out. When you see things that cannot be explained naturally, Jesus said in Mark 16 15 to 17, He said, The believing ones shall do wonderful things in my name. In my name, they shall cast out devils. You are not supposed to negotiate with devils. You are not supposed to entertain devils. I like the way Joseph Priest says it. <laughs> you know, dog, he said, the believer has not been called to cope with issues. He has been called to reign. He doesn't cope. You learn wherever there are demons, you cast them out. It is your responsibility. If there are unexplainable things around your family, around your job, around your, your anything you do, your ministry, you stand and you declare in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, any demonic interference is here. I command it out. Any demon responsible for this, I cast you out of this territory. You learn it. It is your responsibility. When you get into an area, you take authority over the area. All operating spirits in this area. As a child of God that I'm here. I cast you out of these borders. Violence is out. Death is out. 
Poverty is out. I declare grace in the name of Jesus. You cast it out. You cast it out. To cast out means to expel, to forcefully eject. If there is sickness in your body, what do you do? Yeah, don't entertain it, don't pamper it. You cast it out in the name of Jesus. I lay hands on my body. I declare body, I hear the voice of God. In the demonic oppression over my cells, I command you out. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing? Healing what? Healing some. Healing some. All that were what? Oppression of the devil. It is your responsibility. In the name, demons will move out of your house. In that name, demons will move out of your work. In that name, demons will move out of your finances. In that name, oh, Kalaba Hosarabaha. I declare that in the name of Jesus, I declare that in the name of Jesus, any interference, delay, strategy of the enemy is declared null and void. Amen. I cast the most out. I declare what is healed. Jesus is healed. Jesus. Receive healing. I have receive it. Receive healing. I have receive it. Healing. I have receive it. healing. I have it. They told you there is a spirit that kills people at 50 in my family. Cast it. Don't entertain it. It is your responsibility. And the believing one. Can we read it? CV. Everyone. Read it for yourself. Everyone who what? Who believes me? Will what? Will be able to do what? Wonderful things. By what? By using what? The name. The what? They will force out demons. <laughs> and they will what? I will get there later in my next realities. But in the name of Jesus, we cast out devils. No devil in this area can you serve the church. We have casted them out. Spirits of violence, spirit of trickling, we have casted them out. Because in his name, in your family, around your work, Jesus. use the authority now. Lift your hand and use the authority now. Use the authority now. Cast some things out. Your child is dumb, cast it out. There is a disease in your body, cast it out. It's cast that out. Be my short death. Cast that out. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. I exercise dominion in the name of Jesus. Madaka Maho Sotama. Telamago Sotama. Telamago Sotama. Telamago Sotama. Telamago Sotama. Telamago Sotama. Oh, stretch your hand. Exercise your authority. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. The number of your days is fulfilled. Amen. I declare no premature death. I declare in the name of Jesus. Hey. All violent spirits Jesus. are cast out of your dust. Receive grace. I have it. Receive grace. I have it. Receive grace. I have it. I, have it. I, have it. I, have it. I declare now. Any crooked spirit, unclean spirits over your destiny. Fighting that I declare Jesus. today in the name of Jesus. They are out of your path. Amen. Receive grace. I have it. Receive grace. I have it. Receive grace. I have it. Celebrate the Lord. I declare to you that hear the word of God. It does not matter. Spirits that waste, they cannot touch you. They are casted out of your soul. Amen. As a spirit that waste, spirit that brings darkness, Jesus. spirit that frustrates, Jesus. and then things clean to unclean. I declare they are not in your path, Amen. not around your path. Amen. Receive grace. I have it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Celebrate. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. He said, and John the Baptist, he shall go before him and he shall make every crooked path straight. 
every valley shall be exalted every mountain shall be level in the name of Jesus I declare your path is level Amen. no valleys of obstruction Amen. I declare grace will take you through Amen. grace will take you through Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. celebrate your hands for the Lord he said Jeremiah he said Jeremiah don't you know that before I found thee in the womb I knew you I call you by your name Jeremiah said Lord I am but a child now don't say I am but a child you go to anyone I send you to go to you speak to anyone I send you to speak to it's a sin I stretch my hand and touch your lips ah, I put my word in your lips from now your word will set kingdoms up. From now, Jeremiah. Your words will uproot kingdoms. Jeremiah. <laughs> From now, your words will not just uproot and demolish. It will abolish fully. Then he went on Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah. This is what I have done. What do you see? Then Jeremiah said, I saw then the Lord said, you have seen rightly. I will hasten my word to perform it. Listen, you have seen rightly today. He said, in his name, we will cast out devils. Anything that stands your path, today we declare Jesus. that in the name of Jesus, hey. they are out of your path. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Hey. Glory to God. Hey. Glory to God. Hey. You know what Isaiah said? Isaiah said in your path, no vulture shall see your path. They cannot see even your path. I declare over your life. No, hold I declare over your life. Jesus. No vulture, no dark spirit Jesus. shall be in your path Amen. or even see your path. Amen. Receive grace. I have it. I said receive grace. I have it. Celebrate the Lord. Power to cast down. Power to cast down. They said to you know Nehemiah. They said, Nehemiah, this work you are trying to do. Sambalat, Tobiah, and some other people, they are really intense. They are after your life. So, one prophetess sent for, he said, Tell Nehemiah to meet me in the house of God. And when he comes, he should come so that we hide there because they are after his life. Nehemiah said, God has not spoken by her. He said, How can a man like me, a man God has sent to come and build walls, I'll go and hide in the temple because some people are after my life? He said, let us go on and work. One weapon to work in our hand. And a sword or spear in our hand. We shall work. Let them come from where they will come. You see, this is who we are. The danger has been taken out. We are the, we are the host that are anointed by God. Nothing puts us down. If we fall seven times, seven times we shall arise. Jesus. I said, is it grace? I have it. 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 Point number three, brother. You must learn to stand. This is spiritual warfare. Stand, stand. Brother, take your stand. I have taught here. A lot of people don't understand. The word Paul used, I have told you here in church. The word Paul used is not WWF wrestling. You must learn to what? To stand. So Sydney Quay will be right back. Follow us on all our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Skype, YouTube, at Shekinah Avenue. Message continues. This is Olympic wrestling. Not WWE or WWF. Where you can go and stand on the rope. Jump on the rope. Do a triple somersault. Use your knees on somebody's stomach. When you do that in Olympic wrestling, you are disqualified. You lose the match. In this one, there are rules. Paul says, stand. For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. He's telling you. You can't hold him like this. It's violation. You are put in a circle. You don't go out of the circle. And your back must not touch down. That's why I say, having done all to stand. Stand. Don't let them put your back on the ground teaching you, pay attention. The Lord blows and arrows and you feel like you throw. No, it's the wrestling he's talking about. It's maintaining your stand. He says stand. Having done all to stand. Stand. Stand therefore in 
the liberty where Christ has made you free. You know the interesting thing with this wrestling? If I am fighting an opponent like Pastor Dela, and Pastor Dela is able to put me on the ground, and he's trying to put my back down, and I manage to escape, I get one point for escaping. So anytime the devil corners you, and by the grace of God you come out, you have an additional point, brother. <laughs> Hey, Pastor Della. <laughs> you see, there's also the reverse. Whereby you put me down and I managed to escape and put you down two or three points. <laughs> Listen, this is what we do. They say we shall die. We say no, we shall live. We take our stand. If God be for us, we take our stand. This is what we do. We don't fear principalities or powers, spiritual weakness in high places, hey, rulers of the darkness. We have no fear for them. We are standing. We are unmoved. Paul said, none of these things move me. Is it rod? Is it stone? None of them move me. I declare over your life. You receive grace to stand. Your business will stand because you stood. Your marriage will stand because you stood. Your ministry will stand because you stood. Stand, brother. Stand, brother. Stand. No mahosa. Ina na mahosa ya. Mala mahota mahosa. In mala maho paradisa. We will stand. We will stand. We are standing. We are on our feet. Glory to God. Glory to God. Our homes are standing. Our businesses are standing. Our careers are standing. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Hey, glory to God. I declare you will stand like a fool. Stand like a horse. You stand like a tower. And above all, you will stand like the Lord Jesus. Oh, celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Can I hear your voice? Son, when the angel Gabriel came and told Zachariah, he said, Zachariah, you shall give birth. He said, ah, I am old. My wife is also old. Then the angel looked at him. He said, so if I'm old, my wife is also old. How can these things be? Seeing she's also barren. Then the angel said, I, I am Gabriel. That stand." The presence of the Lord. You don't even stand in the presence of the Lord. You are seated on the throne. Know your credentials, brother. Stand. It does not matter what is against us. You will prevail. Take your stand. Ah, His word is our life. Take your stand. I declare you will prevail. In disease, you will prevail. In trouble, you will prevail. Amen. Receive grace. I have it. Receive grace. I have it. Receive grace. I have it. You must stand. We are standing. It does not matter what comes against us. We have taken our stand. We are not moving out of the second. <laughs> hey, cannibal sire. It does not matter. We are not moving out of the second. Glory to God. Glory to God. For those who you for new. Those that you for new. Those that you for new, he predestinated. Those that he predestinated, he called. Those that he called, he justified. Those that he justified, he glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hey, what shall separate us from the love of God? Hey, shall tribulation, shall persecution, shall nakedness, shall peril, shall the sword, shall death. Hey, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Don't be afraid again. Live your life. Don't be afraid again. Stand and stand your ground. No fear. Ah, when you stand, it's a stand having your ghetto of truth. Know what the truth is. You are not a slave. You are not in bondage. You have not received the spirit of fear. No, know the truth. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Know the truth. Who are you? We are sons of God. Anointed of God. Blessed of God. Favored of God. So we take our stand. We take our stand. It shall be well. Because it is well. Say to the righteous. It is well. Our children shall end well. Ah, yesterday. As I was meditating. I slept around 6. 6 in the morning. As I was meditating. I saw a scripture that kept me awake. In sound. Around, around 5 something. My wife was lying down sleeping. I was looking at them. Gently trying, tossing them up and down to take care of the children. Ah, then the scripture in Psalm, he said, Your wife 
shall be a fruitful vine by your side in the midst of you. Then I looked at it, then I looked on the bed again. I shook my head. Then he said, Your children shall be like olive planted around the table. I said, Let me stay here. You know, when you read a lot, it helps you. I know the olive. One characteristic of the olive is the durability and long life. The common oak or olive tree can survive 200 years. Some go to 1,002. So I looked at the children on the bed. Then I told myself, come what may come. This will surround my table. They will surround my table. Listen, take the word and take a stand. A thousand shall fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Ah, don't fear at all. It looked like somebody close fell. It looked like somebody close affair. I don't care about them. I don't know what they believe. What I believe is a thousand shall fall at my side. Ten thousand at my right hand side. And it shall not come near me. I declare over your life. Hey, don't fear. What is in the town? survive. You are living. Give God some praise. 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 You remember the Hebrew children? They said they warmed the fire. They made the fire hotter. They made it hotter. Hotter made hotter. That those that made it hot, when they went close, they died. But they asked them, will you bow? They said, no. We shall not bow. Oh king. Oh Nebuchadnezzar. We do not care. We are not careful to give you an answer. You are the king, so if it comes to this fire and our God bowing down, we shall not bow. It's not make it hotter. They looked at him, they said, Still, whether it's hot or not, you're hotter, we still not bow. That even infuriated the king. You know, usually we believe the other way. You know, I like the way Charles Class puts it. You know, we believe the other way, which says that if God decides to save us, He will save us. I like Charles Class version. <laughs> He said, it is not just that when we get into the fire. If God doesn't save us, we won't bow. No. They say when we get into the fire, we know we shall be saved, so we won't bow. <laughs> you didn't get it. <laughs> it does not matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't get it yet. I'm saying, it, it is not that when they get into the fire, maybe God will save them, or even if he doesn't save them, they are going to the fire. They said, no, they are not even bowing. They won't bow at all. Because when they get into the fire, God will save them. So the king got more angry. That is why he was angry. Because if I get in and I, God will save me, I'm okay. Will you be angry about it? No, you won't be angry. But they told him, You make it hot, you put that inside, we will survive still. Glory to God. Have they not read? Elijah caught on fire. I declare over your life, you will survive. Amen. You will dominate. Amen. You will rule. Amen. Hey, receive grace. I have it. Stand, brother. Jesus. Stand. He says, Stand. Stand knowing the truth. Stand. He said, You are welcome to the glorious liberty of the sons of God. He said, Stand, stand, stand. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that Christ dwells in you. Come on to Mahaya. Hey, this is who we are. We know who we are. What sort of the born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even faith. our faith. Don't wait. Stand. Don't give up. Stand. Hey, don't quit. Stand. They maltreat you. Stand. They gossip. Stand. <laughs> hey, they plan. Stand. Because you understand. 
when a man stands knowing his righteousness knowing the peace of God knowing the salvation gospel glory to God when he stands knowing his salvation glory to God he said we will rejoice in the God of our salvation if there is no meat in the store if there are no fruits outside there we will rejoice we will rejoice in the Lord of our God glory to God we will draw we will draw out of the wells of salvation so this is who we are this is who we are we are the righteous of God no weapon found against us prospers before you found the weapon it is already disqualified that is who we are we stand we stand knowing who we are you shoot an arrow it can't touch it will go over we leap over walls we run through troops this is who we are we break the arrow glory to God this is who we are we stand we stand we stand I am a preacher I preach the gospel we stand brother we stand we stand we stand not only standing mommy after standing I just love it you stand onto the place whereby you engage the last weapon which is praying in the spirit at all times that is the seventh part of the of the armory praying in the spirit I'll get to that I'll, that's the last message I'll teach on spiritual realities that's what will capture all the realities you lock yourself six hours you lock yourself seven hours I will teach I will get there I, I, I am a masterful teacher listen and I'm telling you that now you are standing I guess we are standing we are standing by the grace of God our salvation is intact it's an eternal salvation an eternal redemption glory to God he has made him perfect our captain hey, of our salvation I declare your home will be sound your home will be preserved your home will be here your body will be sound receive grace slap your hand together for the Lord number four <laughs> you learn how to withstand I know more who are. Can I read it for you? Ephesians 6.13 We live by these things. I know how not to talk for a year, two years, three years, ten years about anything. I've mastered my spirit. Can no more to hire. I can stay with you for ten years and never say anything to you. Evil. I have mastered it. Ten years I can be with you. Never tolerate anything I tell you I can take. But when God says move on, that's it. Because you see, these are skills you must you must learn to withstand. Ah, Mohodea. Let me let me read. Say, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be what? To withstand. To what? We stand what? In the evil day. You stand against the schemes of the devil, the lies of the devil, the, the strategies of the but you withstand the evil day. In the evil day, when everything looks wrong, you learn how to withstand. I am not going anywhere. My marriage is not good, but I'm still here. You withstand. If God be for us, you withstand. To withstand means to have strong conviction which causes you to speak. We withstand in the evil day. You have prayed for three years. It looks like it's the same. You stand. You stand in the language of the spirit. You will stand. You don't give up. You don't let anybody tell you anything other thing. You hold on. You hold. You will stand. In the evil day. You know what Ecclesiastes said? Ecclesiastes said, The evil day is like a man who takes a net and casts it into the sea. The fish doesn't know somebody is coming to fish them. He said, That is the evil day. When surprises show up, unexpected things all of a sudden he says it's like fishes that are caught in an evil net he is telling you when those days come because they come to everyone learn to withstand don't just accept it to withstand make sure what you are going through is the will of God if it is not the will of God change it many people don't know that Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane it was not about about being a dwarf no it was about the will of God he wanted to know whether the cup and the will of God were the same thing so the Bible said he stayed prayed he needed to know because he wouldn't take anything that is not prescribed he needed to know that the cup was the will of God when he had prayed and prayed and prayed father your will be done it was the issue of the will of God that's why you stand you will stand it does not matter the arrow the lies the persecution the dreams you are having you will stand you tell yourself God said it and if he said it I believe it and if I believe it that settles it I declare it is a place to withstand in the evil day you will stand amen I say in the evil day you will stand amen it is a place I have it they said you are not well two years you are still dead you are not feeling 
do well. You are quoted by his stripes. I am healed. Don't be afraid. We stand. Go on still. Take some communion. Knock it some more. Drink some more blood. Lay hands on yourself. Tell yourself, when I lay hands on myself, I shall recover. And I've laid hands on myself. If maybe you are still not believing what to be, come to me. Tell me, Apostle, the Bible said, Is anybody sick? Let them call the elders. Let the elders lay hands on them. Pour oil on your head. And sickness shall be lifted and their sins shall be forgiven. Apostle, I have come. Let's practice the word. I will lay hands on you. They brought a woman here. I think within the week, Thursday, they brought, I think she had gone to step on something at the farm. So she was feeling some things in the hand. <laughs> so when she came in, she was discouraged. And the in-law was trying to explain the thing to me. And he said, hey, Apostle, you know, let her just forget the land. Let's just, let's just, let's just like, forget the land. Ah, why would she die over her land? That's a foolishness. I said, Mama, do you want to work on the land? She said, Yes. I said, Do you have joy working on the land? She said, Yes. I said, Do you want to continue working there? She said, Yes. I said, Where did you say was paining you? He said, The left side. I said, How do you feel there? I said, Do you want to give you oil to go and pour it on the thing? He said, Somebody came there and told me he has killed the thing. I said, Okay. Then I explained to her. Went and saw it. Saw egg and bone on her farm. When she saw it, she came to town to come and ask them the meaning. Her mistake. She came and asked those who were in the family. And they said, This is what killed your father. We saw this kind of thing there. Do you think you are safe now? Then I asked her, Why did you go back to go and ask them what it was? Do you need to know what it is? This is the problem of a lot of people. I said, so when you, they told you your father died, what has started happening in your hand? Before that, were you okay? She said, yes. I said, don't repeat this mistake again. I said, immediately you saw it. You tell us what is in me is greater than what is here. You have, you have casted it down. It is not traveling in your mind. Then you can look at it and say, whatever is in this egg and in this bowl, that is not supposed to be in the eggs and bowl. Out of it and out of my farm. After that, I lay hands on her. Prayed for her. Guess what? She's fine. 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 Because the truth. When you continue in the word, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Pastor Kevin, we will stand. Fit you learn to resist. He said, we resist in the faith by what we have become. When we see anything that does not agree, we resist it. We oppose it. We come against it. Ah, I feel like reading for you. First Peter 5, 6, 7, and 8. James 4, 6, 7. I want us to read. What does it say? It says what? Humble what? Yourself. Therefore, under what? The mighty hand of God. That what? He may exhort you. So remember, what is he telling you? Humble yourself, what? Under the mighty hand of God. You see what is there? That he may what? Exhort you, what? Due time, call on. He's explaining. Let's continue. Casting what? Resisting is learning how? To cast all. It is deals with cares, anxieties, worries. You learn to resist it. It looks like it will not work. You resist it. You say, I've casted it onto the Lord. This is with the Lord. Casting all your cares upon him. For what? For he cares for you. Then listen to what we quote usually. It's coming now. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may what? He may devour. Are you part of those he can devour? The only time he can devour you is your curse. You are carrying your own curse. Your spirit will be weak. Your mind will be weak. Stress. He will, he will, he will devour you. But if you learn how to take your curse and cast it to the Lord, we call it humility. You are not the only one looking for money. Everybody is looking for money. You are not the only one looking for promotion. Everybody is looking for promotion. So you learn how to say promotion does not come from the east or the west. God is the judge. He sets up one. He brings one down. He sets up another. The pillars of the earth, they are the Lord's. 
He is able to take the beggar from the dung hill and set him on high and cause him to inherit thrones of glory. This is what God can do. You learn how to cast all. Cast your children on him. Don't let anything take away. It's God resisting. The same thing is in James. The same stuff is in James. This one. Cast it down. Cast it out. Stand. We stand. Resist or cast all on him. Can we read it? He says, well, but he give it more. More grace. Wherefore he said, God resists the proud. But gives grace to the humble. Follow through. Seven. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist. Resist what? Resist him and he will what? The Bible has told you what he will do. He is telling you what to do and what the devil will do. He said when you resist him, he will flee. Bible mathematics. Resist, he will flee. You don't resist, he will stay. Simple as that. You don't need to beg him to flee. Resist. He will flee. Whatever he brings, refuse to care about it. He will flee. If you are too mindful of it, one small diagnosis, you won't sleep. At 12, you are checking. You check your blood level at 12. Check it at 12.30. Check it at 1. Check it at 1.30. Check it at 2. Check at 2.30. Check at 3. Check at 4. Then you increase 4.45. 5.30. 6.15. Check at 15. What I told you what? So as you are checking, it's normal. Normal after three hours. Then they sit hour. Bob, he shoots up. You say, hey, me feel for me. Or guess what? You check after six hours. Then your grandmother calls you. I was checking on you, Dr. Steven. Then immediately you check again. It's high. You're like, hmm. You can't hear man tea. We resist the devil, and what will he do? He will flee. You resist him, you oppose him. You see, some people don't do this thing I am teaching you because they don't do it. By the time they want to resist, it is too late. They didn't withstand, they didn't stand, they didn't cast down, they didn't cast out. Now the thing has, has gone too far. When they are resisting, it's not resisting. Teaching you spiritual warfare after resisting. This is the true Allah. You learn to bind. Binding and what? Loosen. Point number six. Binding. Binding. What you bind on earth would have been bound in heaven. And what you lose on earth would have been loosed in heaven. Matthew 16. Right from 14 to 18, 20. Peter receives a revelation like you are receiving. Then Jesus said, this revelation will reveal who you truly are. And there will be no barrier between heaven and earth. Message. Your yes on earth will be a yes in heaven. Your no on earth will be a no in heaven. We have taught you that binding is about tying things. It is not. We have taught you loosing is about untying things. It is not. Pay attention. It is not. To bind means to disallow, to restrict. So it is not about finding something to bind a demon. It is about permitting and refusing and declaring unlawful. It has got to do with laws. Legal laws in the spirit. So when a man is binding, he is declaring that this is permitted. Or this is not permitted. That is the realm of warfare you are in. When you look at home and there is something there that you don't like, you tell it, I disallow this in my family. You are binding. It's a legal term. It says what you shall declare unlawful shall be declared unlawful. So what heaven has declared unlawful, you also declare unlawful. It said and their place was no longer found in heaven. They can't be there, they can't be in my life. Poverty is not in heaven. So I can stand here and refuse it. Disallow it. It's not there. It won't be here. Not in my life. Teaching you spiritual warfare. Not fables. Not fables. Free winged creatures. I saw a spirit with five eyes. 
traveling through the skies I saw a leopard with teeth like ribs this is in the book of Revelations and Daniel then somebody says these are spirits meanwhile these are descriptions of what the spirits do their nature is revealed through the characteristics of animals and the characteristics of material but somebody will take a literal and be binding this tying it what are you tying it is about permitting and disallowing I'm teaching you Bible for your warfare because warfare you can't walk away from it it's from death to death I like the way the message says he says that it is not just a simple fight it's a life and death a long range fight dog and I am empowering my people when you see something that is not allowed by heaven if it can't be in heaven it shouldn't be in your life because you must exercise your will you must exercise your will you must exercise your will can I read it amplified can I read it from amplified let's read it together as I close Matthew 16 verses maybe 16 downwards to 18 Casting down, casting out, standing, withstanding, resisting. We have added what? Binding and loosing. Can we read it together? Simon, Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, the Son of the living God. They answered him, Blessed, happy, spiritually secure, favored by God. Are you? Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh, and blood mortal man did not reveal this to you but my father who is in heaven pay attention and I say to you that you are Peter and on this rock revelation I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it shall not overpower it look at the 90 I want you to read let's read it to one two go read it as a believer I will give you the keys authority of the kingdom of heaven talk to me what what whatsoever you want now look at the definition what are them is it tying something I want to, is it tying something you see you can't answer who are you afraid of somebody outside this is church teaching you forget about what somebody says outside be here that's renewal of the mind what are you tying are you tying something are you tying some principalities? The Bible said they have been disarmed. What are you going to tie them? You know that in spiritual warfare, we are taught. Another thing that is questionable is that when you are in spiritual warfare, your prayers have to ascend into the second heavens, then get to the third heavens. We are taught, and I will keep names to myself. We have anointed, glorious ministers that taught this. This one. In the New Testament, questionable. He said, Let us come boldly before the throne of grace. Where are you passing? What what a He said, Come boldly. He said, Yeah, come to Messiah, to the city of the living God. To God, the judge. He seated to God, the judge. He said that Christ, through his flesh, has provided for us and a new and a living way by which we come boldly. To the throne, it's always to come so that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So, what do you mean? We are going through the heavens, the prayers to go through the heavens, first heavens, second heavens, penetrate into the third heavens, then they will collect it and put it under the throne, which are the prayers of the saint. I'm teaching you myths until you ask questions you will believe wrongly until you seek for answers in the Bible you will believe wrongly doc very questionable so you find prayer warriors anointed of God spending all their time trying to pass through the heavens because of Daniel's prayer 
when they are living in a covenant where he says Jesus the high priest has passed through the heavens they don't read and, and realize that the Bible says lift up your head all ye gates be lifted up ye everlasting doors let the king of glory come who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord strong in battle they won't read now they want to pave the way through the spirits Mohodosia. but Jesus said when you permit here you are here on earth and you permit it heaven has permitted no, no going pay attention this is the authority of the believer in warfare that we can stand here and declare we disallow this in our family we disallow it in the ministry in the name of Jesus we declare nobody shall die under 60 die under 70 we disallow it in the name of Jesus when we forbid it here heaven then you move on to lose you can permit things I declare in the name of Jesus what I lose here what I allow Lord I declare I allow favor into my life I allow grace I allow mercy to flow into this family I allow power I allow finances profits flow into my business the healing flow into my body I am allowing it this is warfare you are not waiting for God you will wait for him until you die because my TLS once said, God will not do for you what you should do for yourself. And you cannot do what God has already done. Doc, I have got some things to lose. I open my Bible. I read the Psalms. I tell myself, I permit this. David, my servant, I have With my holy oil, I have anointed him. With whom my right hand shall be established. I will set his hand over the rivers. I will call him one of my highest sons, my firstborn, highest of the sons. My mercy, I will not take away from him. I look at it, I said, Lord, this one, I permit it in my life. I take this one, I allow this in my life also. I go on, I read. I said, in righteousness, you shall be established. Oppression shall be far away. Then I come down to read that this righteousness that I'm establishing is not my righteousness. He says down there, for their righteousness, is of me, say the Lord. I said, Lord, this one I permit. I will walk here. Paul said, You know what Paul said? Paul said, I don't know what to choose whether to die or to stay. I don't know what to choose. But I said, When I look at you, you need me here. And because you need me here, I will stay. Can you imagine? Today, wake up to the heritage. Wake up, arise. When you see something you don't like, disallow. When you see something you want, allow. Don't tell us your boss won't give it to you. Allow it. Oh, command it to solve. Malabahosa, stretch forth your hand. Allow babies to form in your womb. Declare, I allow babies to form. I allow money to flow. I allow grace to show up. Oh, stretch your hand and begin to speak. Speak now. Speak now. Speak now. For two minutes, speak. Oh, I declare. My children, they are blessed at all sides. Are you ready to read the Bible? Acts 17. One, two, go. Can we read it together? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Some Jews wanted to attack them. Six. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down, they have come here also. Listen, because you are in that family, the family will be glorious. Your amen is weak. Let me come to this side. I said, because you are in that family, that family will enjoy some peace. Amen. Will enjoy some breakthrough. Amen. I said, because you are in that family, Jesus. declare I am the weapon of God. I am the weapon of God. You see, I am not able to use the scripture in Jeremiah. We said that ye are my battle axe. And ye are my weapon. <laughs> God can take men and take nations as his weapon and I'm declaring to you like that somebody like Abraham he was God's weapon to enter back into the affairs of men 
and I declare that because of you, God will enter into the affair of your family. Amen. Your amen is weak. Let me come here. I said, because of you, God will bless your children's children. Amen. Ah, you are not here. You are not here. I said, because of you, hey, the heavens above and the earth beneath Jesus. shall produce milk and honey. Amen. Because of you, amen. what you are here in the temple. Amen. Weapon like Moses. Moses was God's weapon of deliverance, not a prayer. He said, Moses, when you get there, lift your rod. When you lift the rod, I will work signs and waters. I declare to you today that because you you are in that family, you are in that neighborhood, deliverance is guaranteed. You are the one to administer deliverance for upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance Jesus. and the house of Jacob shall possess. shall possess deliverance is your possession I declare that because of you Jesus. your family will walk in liberty Amen. will walk in plenty will receive grace I have it. declare I am God's weapon I am God's I declare are you free like Joseph God will send you ahead of your generation send you ahead of your family and ministry and you shall preserve you shall preserve the glory you shall preserve the honor you shall preserve the respect and the praise of this glorious gospel because like Joseph you are God's weapon of preservation can I hear a celebration in the temple yeah. listen like Elijah they cried out and said Elijah, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof, Elijah stood in the capacity where his word was more potent than army generals and chariots. His words was more appreciated in Israel than chariots until they named him Elijah, the chariots of Israel. I declare, I declare. I said I declare. I said I declare. Jesus. I said I declare. I said I declare. You are God's weapon. Uh, the way the way you are. Let me come to this side. I said I declare. You are God's weapon of prosperity. Amen. You are God's weapon of wealth. Amen. You are God's weapon of riches. Amen. You are God's weapon of favor. Amen. We receive grace. I have it. We receive grace. I have it. We receive grace. I have it. We receive Give the Lord your Lord of celebration. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. This word. Let me take this word. Where I am now. This is our word for 2022. 2022. I already have written up to 2025. So they have it there. 2022 is our year of influence. Where you will understand. That your work, your work is God's weapon. Your position at work is God's weapon. Where you work is God's weapon. The Bible said, Esther, who knows that you are in the kingdom for such a time like this? I declare over your life that whatever you are, whoever you are, you hear the word of God. You are the weapon of God. Great deliverances and elevation, enlargement over your house. Give the Lord a celebration. Thank you for tuning in to Kingdom Mandate with Apostle Sidney Quay, head pastor of Shekinah Avenue. For prayer and counseling, please call 0200-999-852. Join us for our Sunday services from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Locate us at Shekinah Avenue Auditorium, opposite the Washing Bay, Saika, Obodo, East Lagon. Until the apostle comes your way again, remain blessed.